The No New Friends Podcast is brought to you by Sandpiper Vacations. For the best in vacation plannings, just visit www.sandpipervacations.com. Let them know that the No New Friends Podcast sent you. What's your what's your line of work, by the way? It changes daily, actually. <laughs> <laughs> today today was napping. There you go. Yeah, so yesterday glad you was went uh, to Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> Unemployment's great, actually. Remy says there's a lot of training. But there is. I know there's a lot Remy, of training. Do you run marathons? Remy also spelled there with T H E I R. That's true. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I did a five k, <laughs> like a couch to five k, and that was like eight weeks of training. So I feel like a marathon is like. Five months, four months. And you probably lost a lot of weight, right? Uh, I mean, I didn't, say that. I didn't say how fast I went. I just, I finished it. That's like when the doctor asks you, Scott, are you sexually active? We're like, oh, well, didn't. <laughs> I have kids. Yeah, I mean, historically or. <laughs> Broadcasting from the Sandpiper Vacation Studios, it's time for the No New Friends Podcast. The podcast for adults who love to laugh at adulting, the good, the bad, and the funny. Okay, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. It's showtime. It's showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages above the age of 18. Welcome to the second annual Friendy Awards. Twenty twenty four. Now a lot has changed this year, this calendar year. A whole lot. We're down to the original member of the podcast. We've added two more. And I have a child on the way. Actually, my wife just hit the nine month mark in pregnancy. Another round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the nine month mark is a huge milestone because it's the first time in the pregnancy when Democrats say it's okay to keep it. <laughs> Pregnancy's weird. You know, you have a human being growing inside of you. The only time I have a human being growing inside of me is if I want to discount a Sandpiper vacation. <laughs> <laughs> they can be a real pain in the ass. <laughs> Now, a lot has changed outside the podcast as well. OJ died. A bridge collapsed. The Rock is wrestling again. At 51 years of age, The Rock has come back to wrestle. And instead of calling himself the people's champ, he now calls himself the final boss. Now, hearing that name, the final boss, reminded me a lot of Scott. Now, not because he's scary, but because if he was, in fact, my boss, he would be my final one because if I'd eat myself into traffic. <laughs> During this year, we saw huge growth with the podcast, especially on TikTok. Scott, you made our TikTok account blow up so fast that I thought you bought it tickets to go see the Titanic. I don't get it. All right, say that again. Scott, you made our TikTok account blow up so fast that I thought you bought it tickets to go see the Titanic. So did I say, should I have said imploded so fast? There was a submarine that <laughs> yes, exploded. Okay, there we go. There we okay, go. I got gotcha. It. The, gotcha, impl- I, gotcha. I, the submarine. I, ah, uh, gotcha. I was like sinking. Uh, <laughs> an iceberg. Where are we going? <laughs> I'll let that sink in, like the Titanic. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We thought we make fun of Scott on the podcast because of his weird tendencies of hanging out in his park and in his neighborhood and his love for underage Judy Garland and the Wizard of Oz. So when he came to me with the idea of wanting to promote our adulting podcast, the Disney Parks on TikTok, you could see why I was hesitant. <laughs> now, Scott promoting our podcast, the Disney Parks, is the equivalent to advocating for equal rights at, a, at the Republican National Convention. <laughs> No, no, no. But but in all seriousness, <laughs> streaming at the Disney parks has been good for our podcast, but even better for Scott's family. He rekindled his relationship with Darren through it all, not because he wanted to, but because he realized how many people were watching for Darren. So <laughs> Darren's invited every time now. now through TikTok, That's Darren true. gained a dad. That's very true. But Sarah lost her Wednesdays, which I guess is better than Rachel, who's losing her husband. Now, not because of TikTok, not because of TikTok, but Scott is a very unhealthy individual. The chain smoking and the Diet Coke. He's months left. <laughs> wow. Yeah, sorry. But anyway, anyway, Bud let's lights. get on with the show. <laughs> For the first time ever, I'm the only one who knows who won the awards. 
I know this is let exciting. me tell you. I know, I know. Let me tell you, there's a lot of close races. Um, most of the I'm, winners just edged out the victory. In fact, there was so much edging going on. You'd think we were in Nick's basement with a guy with one working arm. <laughs> so without any further ado, welcome to the 2024 <laughs> Friendy Awards. Now, um, you know, I have a lot of surprises during this episode. So please, please, please stay tuned. We have a very funny, uh, no, I'm sorry, not very funny, very tasteful in memoriam coming up halfway through the episode. We do acknowledge all the uh, people we've lost along the way this year. Um, we have uh, we have some special awards that I haven't told anybody about that I uh, that I created. And um, we have maybe an acceptance speech and we haven't we have a, a you know, we just have a lot of a lot of special things going on tonight that nobody knows about except for myself. Only my eyes have seen this. I'm going to let you cook. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> I think we got to give away the first friendy. Scott. <laughs> All right. Are you going to introduce us or no? No, everybody knows that you're okay, Scott. We here. got uh, the emotional uh, sport we, game, Nick. And we got Sarah. We it's not the radio. It's a podcast. Everybody knows you're here. Okay. Everybody knows you're gotcha. here. Gotcha. Heard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Scott, you interrupted me like six times during the opening <laughs> monologue. Everybody knows you're here. <laughs> My bad. So. <laughs> The first friendy is probably we should probably less save this for last. Best guest. This is best guest. OK. Of like of like uh, of significance. Sorry, okay. Aaron. But so our nominees. Well, there's best are, guest and best guest host. There's a difference. Right, best guest right, is right. Like, an interview. Best guest is like, a, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for explaining. Our <laughs> nominees are dog lady. <laughs> General Tanya Gilbert Pesticelli General Pesticelli got way more yeah. votes than he should have <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that one that, Me either That was the general <laughs> of the ant army that was infesting uh, Chris's office oh. Yeah, yeah uh, Okay Eddie Deason mm-hmm. Jeremy Miller Film woman <laughs> Steve <laughs> And sleepy Larry Hankin <laughs> The Friendy for Best Guess, with a record-setting response rate, by the way, goes to now homeless, Eddie Deason. <laughs> Eddie Deason. Oh, oh, my gosh. Congratulations, Congrats. Eddie. We're going to have to book you on Cameo, I guess, to get a response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's on the local news and everything now. We will we'll have to tell everybody, uh, all of our yes. listeners, what yes. happened. Spill the tea, uh, if you will, Scott. What's that? Spill the tea. If I will, you will spill the tea. I will spill the tea. Okay. Super weird, this, guys. This show is crazy already. I know. This is I like know. the time that Will Smith punched. Uh, what was his name? <laughs> Chris Rock. <laughs> Just like, I don't know what's going to happen anymore. With how distasteful some of these things, I made my wife might come down and slap me in the <laughs> So, so. <laughs> So, Chris, do you want to do you want to kind of talk about what happened with Eddie? This I, I week? will. I will go a for little it. bit, a little bit of history lesson. Eddie has a uh, criminal background, if you will. If you search Eddie Deason, you will find news articles that he has it, gone off. Go ahead. If you listen to uh, Making Out with Tanya Harding. Yeah, uh, yeah. That episode, he talks about his legal. There problems. is a little more. Uh, there is a little more. You can see pictures of him um, being arrested, actually, on TMZ, which I had no idea about oh. until when I was doing research for the Friendies the other day. That, listen, goals to interview someone yeah, big enough to be on TMZ. I, exactly. That's exactly. pretty cool. And if, if you yeah. scroll down, you know, it's like more articles like this. Well, there's a there's a, there's a, there's a plethora of Eddie Deason articles. So Eddie Deason <laughs> has been arrested for um, and accused of like uh, cyber cyber stalking actually physically stalking uh, a waitress at a, at a restaurant. He was uh, he, we, we did hear in his episode that he was arrested because he was, you know, kind of went nuts throwing chairs and stuff. And um, his his representative, his manager, manager, I, manager, I think it is uh, Steve, who we uh, regretfully interviewed um, on another one of our episodes. Uh, they got a little bit of a tiff, Scott. And um, my favorite thing about uh, middle aged tiffs are how much they air their grievances on social media, <laughs> Facebook in particular. <laughs> so yeah. I, uh, I I had unfriended Steve when we cut ties with him. I, I friend requested him right away and he, he accepted just so I could get this in live time. This is, is that like why he ever- keeps calling me. 
Yeah. Um, so that's all oh, they're interested in yet. Um, whenever a tragedy happens, I turn on CNN and I'm glued to CNN. Oh, you know, who, who did this? What's going on? This was like, you know, I was glued to Facebook. I was I was wake. I, I, and this is I wish this was a joke. I wish this was satire. I was waking up at like three in the morning. Everybody was a toss and turn. I was going on Facebook to see if anybody posted. Oh, uh same posted stuff i spent more time on facebook this past week than i have in a very long time uh, i felt I, bad for like looking at it but also i grabbed popcorn and i was, oh, I was ready yeah. to go because mm-hmm. it was very entertaining it was it was extremely entertaining so what happened uh allegedly allegedly we don't was, know we don't exactly know exactly what happened we, cannot, we only go are going based off of facebook statuses um, oh, wow. I don't know if I should say all this, but um, Eddie Deason posts on Facebook. Um, what was his status? I like Something young women. I like young women. I, li- I like young women. Right. Right. He said, I like young women. And then he posted in a big red. It was like yes. in the red background. Oh, yeah. And I was yeah. like, this is a little odd. And that's when I screenshotted yeah. it and sent it to you guys. And I was about yeah. to text Steve say, hey, man, I think Eddie got hacked. But I didn't because I don't want to get involved. No, because you're a horrible friend. So, um. <laughs> So then, then if you go to his Facebook text Messenger, Steve, hey, check out our TikTok live. I, if, if, <laughs> <laughs> if you go to our, um, uh, if you go to his uh, uh, Facebook Messenger, you can make like little statuses. It was I F kids. I was like, oh, that's um, definitely not something Eddie would write. I mean, that's definitely not something anyone would write. Right? It's it's incriminating and, and disgusting. So uh, obviously, some sort of hacking had to have been going on. Right. Clearly. Well, next day. I believe it was eddie posts on facebook uh steve but, but first you steve, said you said what if it was i steve? bet you yeah steve is involved with this not so much that i thought it was him but like i really wanted it to be steve. <laughs> right, like, yeah. like, like, the plot thickens <laughs> yeah, right so so before we get to the next day so then steve posts something and Steve says, Post. Yes, go ahead. You you you, oh, yeah. you do the role of Steve. I'll do the role of Steve. Okay. Yes. <laughs> this is going to win the, the Friday's next year, right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Steve Post. Many of you are asking me what uh, if Eddie was hacked. If Eddie's okay, you know what, Eddie, Scott, Scott, Scott. Uh, let, let's pause here. Eddie Deason was the voice of the annoying kid in Polar Express. For those who don't know, because there might be people right. who don't know who Eddie Deason is. Go ahead. And I've been I've been following Eddie since we interviewed him too. Like his posts, like all of his posts are very funny. They're very comedic. Just stupid everything. It's basically like our podcast, but on a social media post. I feel. But like, yeah, it was funny until that one status where he said he sat at the back of the bus and said he felt like Rosa Parks. We forgot about that one. Yeah, Yeah, we like to. I try to forget about that one. So Steve posts, um, hey, guys, uh, many of you are reaching out to me about Eddie. Is he OK? Is he hacked? He's like, I don't know what's going on with Eddie. He left for Barnes and Noble and I haven't heard from him. He's off his meds and he's acting crazy. Uh, I have nothing to do with him anymore. Yes. And then Eddie responds. <clears throat> this just happened. I called the police to give me an escort to the house, went to the house. Steve and I lived in. We went to the door. Steve said he would not let us in. It was seven this morning. Steve said too early. Steve stole my computer yesterday, so I wanted to get more of my clothes and things so he wouldn't destroy them or throw them away. The policeman said I could not go in because, quote, I had already left. I said I left because my life was in danger. Steve's temper. Steve then took out his phone and gleefully started filming with the policeman. He's completely nuts. I am scared he's going to throw away all my clothes and things. The police would not help me. The policeman said I would have to get a lawyer. I can't go in and get my property. Truly unbelievable. And the funny th- and the funny thing is the way he <laughs> the way he posted on Facebook too is literally sentence and then a space sentence and space. It was very spread out, just like you. Yeah, it was very. It was like a speech. Yeah. It was a, oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, this was he, he wanted me to read this. <laughs> <laughs> he also says he goes I want to apologize for the awful things that uh, that my manager Steve said. Uh, I'm so sorry, and he's no longer my manager. I fired him. Oh, Steve put IF kids on my messenger photo. This guy is truly sick. Luckily, it is fixed now. I honestly think if he finds me, he's going to try to kill me. He's a full blown psycho. And <laughs> Steve posts a video of the interaction that Eddie talks about. He did. He did on his Facebook, and it's my no favorite there. part. It's, it's no, no longer there. No but I did there. screen Perfect. record it, so oh, I have. have the, it. Yes. Yeah. 
And maybe for our Patreon members, we will release the tapes. We will no, release the full tape for our Patreon it, members. The tapes. I was a little high. It's, when this was I, I watched it. I dissected yeah. it. So in the it, my favorite quote in there is because Steve, Steve Steve is not a good guy. Steve lies and this and that. And my favorite thing in there is Steve is like, this guy is slandering me on Facebook. And Eddie looks at the camera and goes, Steve, a lot of people slander you on Facebook. <laughs> Well, great. I'll sue them, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to sue them. We, we will release the tape uh, on our Patreon for every paying member. I will release it in our, I'm sorry. I will release it in our Discord for all paying members. So our TikTok subscribers and our Patreon members, I will release the, the, the Eddie tape. The, the Eddie tape, I've watched that thing about 65,000 times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. I, I, that was one of the things that I woke up early and I saw that and I screen recorded it. I was like, I, I don't know yeah. how long. I'll be, like, I almost I feel like we should put it on TikTok. <laughs> uh, I mean, you only have nine months left to do that. So, <laughs> yeah, right. I'll put it, I'll put it out there at the end. <laughs> oh, so. Uh, we don't know what's happening. The very next day, Eddie's back to normal posting things. Steve's back to normal posting things. So yeah. we don't know. Um, yeah. There's two sides to every story. Somewhere is the truth. We may never know the truth. I don't know. We, we, we may never know the truth. But, uh, you know, this actually ties directly into our oh. sponsor. So uh, can, let me know if you guys can hear this. Viewer discretion is advised. Now, the segment is more of a visual thing, and it was on our YouTube when we streamed it live, and we stream live every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so you're going to want to catch that so you don't miss a thing. Now, unfortunately, we had to take it off of the YouTube, so if you want to see the video, and it's amazing, it's really funny, and some of the other videos that we do during the Friendlies, you're going to have to join our Patreon, our Clubhouse for as low as $2 a month, just go to our website, www.nonewfriendspodcast.com. Click on join our clubhouse. Enjoy the rest of the episode. The rest of the Friendies is still on YouTube, and you can catch that at youtube.com. Just search No New Friends Podcast or go to the link on our website. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Cops, for sponsoring uh, sponsoring the Friendies tonight. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, that was amazing. Um, if you're hearing this episode, you're not going to hear what we just what just happened. You have to watch us on YouTube uh, every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you can see all this stuff because we're we've gone to a very live, very visual format. Yeah. So uh, I guess, you know, with Eddie, uh, we, we do have an award um, named after him tonight. Wow. Uh, oh. So without <laughs> any further ado, uh, we do have uh, another award we're giving out. Can't wait. OK. So I believe I believe this award is going to most likely person to be thrown out of somebody else's house. The Eddie Decent Award goes to. Ah, uh, that's that's pretty messed up. <laughs> Why does your hair look so oily? That was, that was not so great. It's actually, that was actually not funny at all. <laughs> so Chris, that was, that was actually not even that was actually not even funny. Chris wins the Eddie Deason Award. Congratulations. That sucks. So I'm most likely to be thrown out of somebody's house. I guess it's for leaving towels on the floor. I have no idea. That was all right. I was so Not mad I made funny. someone else take you to the airport. <laughs> Not even funny. <laughs> all right. Anyway. Thank you, Chris. We've got we've got so much more with the friendies. Yeah. But um, guys, there was um, a marathon this week, uh, this weekend at my resort. And Here's the funny thing about marathons. So, you know, I see everybody wearing their medals. Like, I just finished the marathon Chris, and all wait, that. Chris, a marathon is the thing that people run in. Um, and use oh, like, yeah. I thought it was for the telethon. We would donate no, for people no, that look like Scott. That's, 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 <laughs> that's the, the telethon. <laughs> God, that's the oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. So, so there's this marathon. Everybody's wearing the medals and all that. And I'm walking around. And here's something I don't understand. There are a lot of fat people that finish the marathon. And I'm like, how does that happen? Because like you train to run a marathon mm -hmm. or these 10 K's right. or five K's or whatever. And you, shit or you just like, wake, yeah, <laughs> or you're just waking up saying, oh, I think I'm going to run a marathon today. I don't, I don't understand. 
Some people are actually motivated, I think. Right. But OK, they're running. The, I, I get it. Right. But they have to train for these. Right. Like you can't yeah, just wake up one day and say, oh, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to run. It's like months long training. Well, I know like Disney one, like people can walk up fastly, I guess. But still, that's a lot of I mean, no, they got the balloon ladies, but, though. And that's thanks to with Disney, like it's basically like running a marathon every single day. You're in a park. So like ask, ask Sarah, yeah. look how tired Sarah is today because she's been running around the parks all day with you. They only they're half the half a day. Doesn't well, count. I had to fast walk because <laughs> Scott only gave me an hour to drink. Sarah, you had to fast because it's Passover. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, I ate bread first hour. No, you're not supposed to eat bread. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> you, abst- you abstain from it. Text me. Well, I'll I, tell you the I, rules. I didn't. I like carbs and I eat a lot of pizza. So. <laughs> Sarah runs a marathon at Disney every Wednesday. She does. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) But like, is there no training that goes into running these races? Is my question. How how is it that one um, trains for uh, for a marathon or trains for a a 510K? Muscle with just a little bit of fat on top. I don't know. I graduated college without studying. I mean, (laughs) like. Same There's no here. prerequisite to completing something. You know what I mean? Um, what's your What's your line of work, by the way? He does changes daily. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> today Today was napping. There you go. Yeah, so yesterday was uh, Fortnite. <laughs> so. Unemployment's great. Actually, Remy says there's a lot of training. If there is. I know there's a lot Remy, of training. Do you run marathons? Right. So I, Remy also spelled there with T-H-E-I-R. <laughs> That's true. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I did a 5K, like a couch to 5K, and that was like eight weeks of training. So I feel like a marathon is like five months, four months. And you probably lost a lot of weight, right? <laughs> I mean, I didn't, say that. I didn't say how fast I went. I just, I finished it. <laughs> Okay. That's like when the doctor asks you, Scott, are you sexually active? We're like, oh, well, I, mean. <laughs> I have kids. Yeah, I mean, historically, or <laughs> I mean, they always say like it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. Like a sprint is just like running fast. A marathon, they can just they can go swiftly and still be overweight and get it done. Oh, I'm not talking about overweight. Oh, they're. I, like, I, like I get, I, I get it. And listen, I'm not judging. I it, like if you're out there trying to, ma- you know, t- make yourself a better person, and and you're gonna run and you're gonna do the marathon and all that. Hey, good, go, do it, absolutely. Um, maybe it's just the beginning for them. Maybe it, maybe it's the beginning of their out, weight loss journey. Why don't you to- run after them? And find out for us and report back. <laughs> like, well, why are you, you fat? You know what's <laughs> you know what's really funny too is United States. They're like fuck the metric system until it comes to running. <laughs> it's like it's like they they're like all right. We're doing a 3.2 mile race. Oh, let's call it a 5K. Sounds way more impressive. Sounds <laughs> right. way more impressive. Let's call right. it a 5K. Right. right. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, let's forget about the metric system until it, it sounds like more than it's 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 like that's it, just American culture for you. Yeah. As long as you can paint the picture, you're doing something hard. Like, that's why you drink Diet Coke, Scott. It's like you shouldn't be. Drink, you don't have to drink Diet Coke. Just drink. Diet Coke. <laughs> right. Exactly. I've diet. never seen I've never seen an in shape person drink a Diet Coke. I started drinking Diet Coke. <laughs> I, I was like, as soon as I started gaining weight, I, was like, I guess it's time to drink Diet Coke. <laughs> Well, it's like <laughs> I'm addicted well, it's like now. a McDonald's too with Diet Coke. It's like you go and order the big the value meal, and you're like, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll yeah. do the king size. I'll do the big back, the big right. Big, I'll do the biggest <laughs> size in a Diet Coke. Right. I got this. Yep. Super <laughs> size that for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get McDonald's and you get. Oh, you know, I got the Diet Coke. I got the Diet Coke. I'll wash it down. I'll wash it down with zero calories. <laughs> I'm drinking Diet Coke oh, and a salad. Oh, yes, but you're eating a salad, a large Big Mac, and large fries. You that, the salad you doesn't count out. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> With extra, extra ranch dressing. <laughs> and bacon. Would you like it mixed in or on the side? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sarah is like, excuse me, Mr. Scott, can I have like popcorn or something? Just anything. <laughs> Just to survive. (laughs) 
listen, they're lucky if they get water, damn it. <laughs> we we do have we we do have to talk about some of the we we we've had uh, two epic TikTok streams over the last two two days. So we'll talk about that a little bit later because there's some funny stories there as well. But are you guys ready for word of the week? Yes. 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 Praise your savior, let him speak. It's Lord Remy's word of the week. What is going on, everybody? It is I, Lord Remy, with your word of the week. Today's guy, today's word of the week is your addition. Your addition refers to a profound knowledge, especially gained through extensive study or expensive in a particular field or multiple fields. Someone with no your addition is typically week. high educated and well versed in various ob- subjects, possessing a deep understanding and expertise. So for me, I am a musician. So that's one thing I cross off my list because whatever instrument you throw in my face, I can play. I can play uh, the saxophone, piano, bass, drums, whatever instrument, I can do it. I'm uh, I'm really quick at it. Plus, you know what? I'm an expertise in some video games as well. So except for Call of Duty because I suck at that game. Uh, Here's a little history of it. The word word your edition has its roots in Latin. It stems from the Latin word your dito. Which means a, a instruction or education. In, medi- in medieval Latin, your dito referred specifically to the act of teaching or being taught. Over time, the meaning of your edition evolved to emphasize not just basic education, but but profound knowledge and scholarship gained through extensive extensive learning and study. During the Renaissance period in Europe, there was a renewed interest in classical learning, and your edition became highly valued. Scholars sought to emulate the intellectual achievements of ancient civilizations, particularly those of Greece and Rome. As a result, your edition came to represent not only a broad range of knowledge, but also a depth of understanding across various, various fields, anymore. including literature, philosophy, <laughs> history, and Who science. Knows? All right, now, guys, here, here's your joke. Scott, your head is so hairless that when you wear a poncho at a theme park, you look like a broken condom. There you guys have it. That was your word of the week. And I'll see you guys next time right here on Word of good. the That's Week. <laughs> His jokes are always pretty good. Hey, this is Abby with the middle school words word of the week. Wow, Remy really started this revamp off strong with this one. I mean, seriously, I think Remy just wanted us to acknowledge him. Let that be a lesson to you all that my dad takes background noises seriously. Now let's get into, the, into what Remy got wrong. Inept, usage, disdain, lexicon, particular, again, and a bunch of gibberish that I couldn't even understand. Now, I don't want to just call out Remy for not, for not knowing how to speak. You guys couldn't figure out that Sean's friend has cerebral palsy. By the way, Remy, <laughs> next week, can you cover what an open relationship is? My dad won't tell me, and I think I want one. Now let's get into what Remy got wrong. Inept, usage, disdain, lexicon. Crap, I lost my place. Sorry, guys. So, this week's phrase of the week is take the L. L stands for take the loss. Frequently used to describe flunking a test, being dumped, being stood up, being beaten up, or robbed, or losing one's money on a stupid investment like Pokemon cards. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> the FBI agents in charge of protecting Sarah just took the L when they realized her cover was blown on the podcast. <laughs> now, let's get into what Remy got wrong. That's all for me. Slay queens! Thank you so much. Abby uh, and Remy. Remember, Remy kept great. repeating himself. So that's why Abby was repeating herself. <laughs> I was um, so... Best jokes are the ones you just played. <laughs> I was so confused at why stuff was... Yeah. So I, th- I think since we had our first uh, segment, we should do another friendy. We should. Before we do that. So Chris, oh, all wow. week okay. is like, hey, Forgot. this is going to be a regular episode. We're just going to sprinkle in the episode. Nothing changes. It's just going to be a regular oh, episode. It's just going to oh. be a regular episode. Okay, then wait. he informs me tonight. There's not any cliff notes tonight. So it's not a regular <sighs> episode then. I, I, wrote, I wrote so many cliff notes. Oh, now. Do I, have no, I have no idea what's going on in the episode because I'm just <laughs> typing away here. Just <laughs> typing away. I'm not only my producing the friendies and hosting the friendies. I'm now typing away. 
Thank you for your service. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. I'm going to go to IHOP this Veterans Day for this. <laughs> All right. Second Friday the night goes to. Just kidding. Why would I, see, I, I, why would I just give you the Friday? Why would I just give you the Friday? What's the award? Best recurring segment. Is it reoccurring or recurring? Re, uh, re- that's a good question. That's a really good. Maybe that's the next word of the week. Delay or no. Best recurring slash reoccurring segment. Reoccurring. And the nominees are Travels and Tribulations, Chris's Cliff Notes, Remy's Word of the Week, Middle School Word of the Week, Florida Man versus Jersey Man, and Move! I'm gay. I think uh, that sorry. should be the new very way much. to say it. <laughs> and the friendy goes to by one vote. Talk about edging. And the friendy goes to middle school Aww. word of the week. Yay, Abby. Congratulations, Abby. Now, Abby could not be here tonight. <laughs> to accept the award so uh we do have remy accepting the award for um for abby via uh video call so no. we do have to uh it's loading yeah. oh remy oh, oh remy you won uh <laughs> remy you won buddy uh I mean, middle school word of the week one uh hello <laughs> <laughs> Remy, you uh, you won the friendy for um, the best recurring segment. You and Abby. <laughs> hey, Remy, you there, <laughs> buddy? Uh, um, your camera's okay. on. <laughs> Remy. Uh oh. Okay. Uh-oh. All right. Sorry, guys. Um, Unexpected I, I'm, error. I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I. Well, you know, congratulations. Uh, congratulations to Remy and Abby for taking home taking home that friendy. Congratulations, guys. And if if you want to see all of the uh, acceptance videos and the different things that we have going on, make sure you watch uh, this episode live. It's uh, the 2024 Friend Friendy Awards. It It'll be on the YouTube forever, and you can watch it. <laughs> Ryan, I don't know if that was Jenner or Chester. It was very confusing what it I was. Just- I love Remy's response. What video? <laughs> <laughs> Remy was testing out some streaming software the other day, and since that was on YouTube, I was like, I had the perfect idea for this. <laughs> love you, Remy. So we, uh, we, you know, we did the TikTok live again uh, today at Epcot. No. Yes. Yeah, I know. What? I know. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Chris, Shocking. it's Wednesday. I didn't get the text. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I got seven. I'm sorry. I just hit the one. <laughs> but also did one last night. We did a, a monorail pub crawl. Uh, we started at Trader Sam's. Uh, then went to the Enchanted Rose at the Grand Floridian and then skipped Contemporary because we wanted to get back to uh, Polynesian to watch the fireworks. But it was re- the, like we went to Trader Sam's at the Polynesian. I'd never been. We waited like three hours. It was cute. It was it was pretty cool. Go ahead, it's Nick. a fun play. I, I've only been once and it was one of those things like we'd been trying to get in there and it's very hard to get in. Like you said, it was three hour wait. Yeah, if you like, take poppers, you can get in just fine. Uh, maybe. <laughs> you do have to go in like a little back door to get in there, though. <laughs> but it's, it's a really cute place, and I like it because all the drinks are fun and different, and they have different effects in the bar, too. Yeah, every, yeah, each drink has a different effect or different server thing that, they, you know, they got the zombie, and, they you know, it, it it's it's neat. It's really neat. I think had I seen that before I had gone to Oga's, I would have been more blown away. But small area... Um, we, we were sitting with uh, people that we didn't know. Yeah. Uh, and mm. I don't love that. Um, neither did they. It's probably more them than you. <laughs> right. It's all I got out right. of this guy. <laughs> right. Uh, but we had super, super fun. Super fun. We had uh, super fun. Yeah, I think that's how it <laughs> Super fun. I definitely <laughs> yeah, fun. drank way more than I should have. But the weirdest things happen. The weirdest thing happens on the monorail. We're on the monorail and I like turn and sprain my ankle. 
Yeah, I uh, mm-hmm. I got the, I got the text saying uh, from Scott saying I think I tore my Achilles tendon. I blocked Scott. I was like, <laughs> I can't do this. Tonight. I was like, what did you, what were you doing? Oh my gosh, are you okay? I was standing on the monorail and I pivoted. <laughs> I think I was more concerned. I was more concerned if he captured that on video or not, because that's (laughs) that's like your viral moment. I'm sure it, Sydney could uh, could <laughs> Sydney was basically babysitting us through the screen all night. Yes, <laughs> Sydney could probably answer if I if we caught it on on tape or what or what happened. I know I said, "Oh my god, I just hurt my ankle," um, but I don't know at that point. I don't know what was seen. Uh, again, I was you know this this was towards the end of the night. It was uh, a rough night, um, but. I thought maybe, uh, you know, a twist, it'll go away today. It did not. It it hurts like hell. Um, so I think but, your problem is on the monorail, you have to pour for vor when you're supposed to be on tango, blah, blah, blah. That joke was still funny. I said that in the text last night, too, and I was cracking up at myself. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> Sean's like, you made it funny. Now, here's the thing. I, I hurt my ankle, but you know what? Didn't bitch about it all day. I went about my. I, I walked around. Check, your t- no check the group check, yeah. Scott. Are you serious? You, no. Darren, everyone was just talking about how bad your ankle was. Okay, come here. Abby is here. We have to let her know. Abby won a friendy. Abby, you won a friendy. You won an award for best reoccurring segment, the middle school word of the week. You won. The, the listeners voted for you, and you, you won. They did. You won. So, what do you want to say? Um, okay. You guys are the best. Couldn't oh, no, you're the couldn't best. Couldn't do this without you. You guys. You couldn't have actually. It's true. Thank you so much for my dad and my brother who write the script for me. Even though I'm <laughs> I thought it was you this whole time. And sometimes I bring up words on my own, which I'm better. Um, I just want to appreciate this moment. Thank you. I couldn't have done it without you, even though I don't know half of you. But love you guys. <laughs> We love you too, Abby. We love oh, and you, also, Abby. I don't know why this podcast is called No New Friends when all my dad does is make new friends. Period. Aww. All right, you slay, Queen. Thank you so much. All right, so in uh, thank you, Abby. Congratulations. So in today's stream, um, it was I, I get this message on the chat like, "Look behind you," and that's always a little scary. Uh, that is be- terrifying because it's like, "Look behind you," and that's creepy. A lot of times there's nobody there. Was it Eddie Deason? <laughs> it was not Eddie Deason. <laughs> <laughs> so I like look around and I'm like waiting for someone to wave to me and nobody's there. I'm like, okay. So I turn back around and then I hear, hey, hey, you. Um, it was I, Eddie Deason. <laughs> 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 and I turn around. Back to the voice, Chris. <laughs> and it's like hey, four kids. Hey, you. <laughs> oh, what, really? Four yeah, children. These little cute Australian kids. And so they, they were. Oi! That's exactly. Oh, they were they were adorable, <laughs> but they were following us around the rest of the day. They were they were. Uh, That's tar- that sounds horrible. <laughs> it was because I just wanted to get my drink on. I got these kids following me. So um, we, you know, I do the thing where if someone uh, if someone gifts the gold box, which is a couch potato, I have to stop and do 10 jumping jacks. These kids were adorable. Every time I had to do jumping, jumping jacks, they did jumping jacks with me. Just oh, like in the middle cool. of the queue. Yeah, it was super Aww. cute. They were uh, they were they were super fun. So the big thing is always like, oh, you know, I never let anybody eat. Never let anybody eat. We right, ate today. Yeah. We ate today after Sarah really? Lewis left. After yeah, Sarah I Lewis left, starved. <laughs> we, we hit up some of the booths, and I had like sticky <laughs> ribs and and uh, uh, oh, they were the barbecue sticky ribs. And oh then, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, scallops and risotto, and then also. Um, Oh, was oh the street corn, amazing, amazing! But we ate, so I couldn't, I Sounds couldn't amazing. stop eating. But we were also there a lot late; like we didn't leave till like three o'clock. That was after Sarah left that you ate how all that. You, yes, yeah. Oh wow, Scott, how do you eat your street corn? Just curious. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. We needed, we needed more of this. But yeah, I like I had to eat because I was I felt like I was going to die. Yeah, uh, Sarah on the uh, on the other hand was dying of hunger. Correct. Starving to death. Starving well, to death. Good thing you didn't die, Sarah, because you didn't make it into our first ever 2024. Well, it'll be the first and last ever 2024, but our first ever. <laughs> 
extremely tasteful in memoriam. Without any further ado, this is the in memoriam section of the podcast of the friendies. And, 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 and I will tell you, <laughs> I will tell you that Scott, um, I know you hate copyrighted stuff. So uh, I, I really wanted that song, that that opera song by Andrea, uh, uh, Andrea Bocelli. Or something. I thought you were singing it. Well, so I so instead of him singing it, I uh, I pulled up a karaoke um, of this in Spanish and I uh, oh, and I, I, I this is this is my vocals. So um, I can't wait without any further ado. No new friends. Friendly Wars 2024 in memoriam. Unfortunately, the in memoriam is something else that we had to cut out of the audio episode, but it is still on our YouTube under our live videos, the 2024 Friendly Awards. It may be the funniest thing that we've ever put out. Uh, you can also hear it and see it in its entirety if you join our clubhouse for just as low as $2 a month. It's in there. You can see it and you won't miss a thing. But check it out on our YouTube. Oh, oh my God. That was so sad. <laughs> Uh, I hope you guys like that people. touching oh tribute uh, to. And if you're listening to this podcast, uh, go watch everything that you probably just. Oh my, god. my god! Oh my god! I am crying right now. There's a longer version of that song too. Actually, I had to cut it down a little bit. I, s- I started crying on the first note. <laughs> Well, I was like trying to read them too because I'm like, well, maybe they'll he'll leave the music in because it's really funny and so the podcast. I'm like, maybe I'll read the stuff on there. But I so half of I will out. post that to Patreon. Uh, I will post it on the Discord uh, for those who didn't get to watch it live. So if if you're listening to this episode, you need to go and watch the uh, the YouTube video. It's amazing. You're not going to get the impact that we just got <laughs> watching it live, but. <clears throat> wow. Okay. Let's get the best friendy for best TikTok personality after yeah, that. Let's do, let's do it. Yeah, let's dying. do rapid fire. It will be dying. Nominees are Scott, Sarah, Luis, Darren, Chris, and Park Hoppagana. PHH. Cool. The friendy four best TikTok personality goes to. You won by a landslide. By a landslide. You didn't edge anybody. Wow. (laughs) Naturally. If Lewis's Lewis's ass was a swan, I would have. That would have probably gotten the. I would have voted for that one too. (laughs) Lewis isn't eligible. He wasn't born in the States. <laughs> Congratulations, so, you, Sarah. Sarah, do thanks, you have an acceptance? Uh, do you have a three you. minute longer acceptance um, speech for us? Actually, no, because I I wasn't expecting this at really? all. Really, you? I, well, that's what everybody says. No, I. I <laughs> <laughs> I was I was expecting bottom tier. I'm not gonna lie. Um, Darren. dot com. You know, uh, my husband. He, he does the the Spanish at the parks too. Uh, it's you know, true. I understand. It's true. I understand. He says like, hot dogs are really good. I know. I saw a Stein for one earlier. We almost bought one just for your sake. Um, would have been the best eleven dollars spent for him for sure, <laughs> and for you guys, honestly. All that, all that, all that money. You said, you said Nick, <laughs> Nick and Sean are here. Wait, where's the hot dogs at? <laughs> but thank you guys. Thanks. See, it makes I it all worth that. it, Sarah. Aww. You give up your Wednesdays and you just won a friendy. It's a very exclusive club that you're now in and uh, I see that. it's a prestigious award. Check, do I do things I don't realize when I've had adult beverages or something? Because I tell you. I don't know. I didn't <laughs> vote for you. I voted for Park Apihanna. Yeah, so did I actually, Sarah. So please don't thank <clears> us. <throat> yeah. And yeah, we had nothing to do with it. No. Nah. Well, I, I thanks, guys. <laughs> I appreciate being right there with Hannah for sure. Well, awesome. Congratulations. Chris, thanks, should we go man. on to another Congrats. award or do you want to do yeah, Jersey Man, Florida Man? No, let's go on to another one. Best let's guest host. Oh, yeah. best guest host. Best guest we have host. A okay. plethora of nominees. We got Darren. Alex from the mm-hmm. Diz His Podcast. James Yan. Ryan. Sophisticated Gentleman. Eddie Deason again for some reason. <laughs> And Mary. <laughs> As a guest host. I'll tell you what. Mary came in second. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Mary came in second. 
But the winner for Friendy for Best Guest Host goes to the wise man, Darren. Oh, yay. Yay! Truly, Woo! truly deserved. I'll tell you what. Maybe it's not so much deserved for best guest host, but he his popularity gained uh, won him this award because he has he he's not a guest host anymore. He's a part of the podcast now. He's a host. He's he's an yes, individual. Yes. So I, I think I think that he truly won this because just he is skyrocketing up the charts uh, as far as his personalities uh, on the podcast because well deserved, well deserved. Okay, guys. Um, Darren is on the line. Wow! And he oh, God. The wise man. Yep, the wise man is here Darren. with an acceptance speech. Go ahead, Darren. I'd like to thank the Academy, and I'd uh, <laughs> like to thank uh, Chris and uh, Sarah and Abby. I couldn't do this with any without any of y'all. Oh, and Nick, of course, can't can't do it without Nick. Can't forget um, me. Yeah, I just want to thank you all. Oh, Every thank you. Except Scott. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're still looking at you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to start playing the music. That was a beautiful acceptance speech. Beautiful. You know what's funny is uh, my oldest one, my youngest one, the middle gets left out again. The middle child uh, just gets left out. <laughs> she was like the first one I met, too. <laughs> let, me, let me just give a couple more. Um, Go for it. A couple more. We got um, most likely to piss off Mr. Scott. The nominees are Chris, Luis, Sarah, Nick, Darren, and Chris's unborn child. This should be Only a landslide. Two individuals were even voted for. Okay. Out of all of the responses, those two people that were voted for were <laughs> Chris's unborn child and Chris. <laughs> no, no, and out by a smidge. Chris. <laughs> Really? <laughs> just by just by just by a hair. Wow. Just by a hair. Wow. Uh, because uh, what, my vote was your unborn yeah, child. That was my vote as well. To major <laughs> that was my vote as well. I think that yeah. was mine too. <laughs> um, everybody behind the scenes voted for that because we knew. Um, <laughs> most likely to return first. Scott Super Dead Cat. Mary. <laughs> Mask mandates in Florida or Jesus Christ. <laughs> The friendly for most likely to return first. I will sell, tell you that Mary came in dead last. <laughs> <laughs> Mask mandates in Florida. Scott's dead cat. And Jesus Christ, albeit Mary. With coming in first, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. A special shout out to Jesus Christ. Wouldn't been able to win this without you. Literally, because you got you won. Where the flip in a fan boat, a crash in a truck. These states are filled with people who suck. So it's time for us to play New Jersey Man versus Florida Man. Hey guys, this is Ryan coming to you from the No New Friends newsroom located this week on Chris Yob's roof. Emily asked me to come over and fix the roof since Chris doesn't know how, and she was afraid if he fell off the roof, he'd cause his second earthquake in New Jersey in the last month and a half. And I don't think New Jersey would recover from that. And also, she's tired of Chris calling it a water feature every time it rains. So when I got here, I went ahead and moved his trash down to the road, seeing how he's too lazy and somebody had to do it. And couldn't count on Lewis or Sarah to do it, seeing how they still have a broken TV in their living room that's been there since before the pandemic. Jeez, Jews really never throw anything away. Speaking of which, you guys skipped a Jewish holiday. Last Saturday was 420, and I'm sure Sarah observed it. You know, I'm glad Chris finally has a place to live and isn't still battling the streets like Scott on TikTok. Speaking of Scott on TikTok, last week somebody drew him while in a battle. Last time somebody drew Scott was when that kid had to describe to the policeman what the bad man looked like. Oh, look, Chris is home. He doesn't see me up here on the roof. Looks like he's still hobbling around from his ankle injury. Well, at least he's oh still God. ambulatory. If you don't know what that word means, go ahead and ask Remy and he'll tell you the definition of it. Probably <laughs> twice, though you still won't know what it means. <laughs> Speaking of games, Sean's into people with disabilities now. Jeez, I've heard of chubby chasers, but never heard of cripple catchers. Ironically, they're both easy oh, to oh chase and catch. And Chris fits into both categories. Chris looks very confused on why the trash is down at the road. Why all of a sudden is he blasting loud copywritten music that I'm not allowed to use because Mr. Scott told me I can't anymore? Looks like Chris is walking around his house with a knife? No wonder when he does this, he's just hungry and he's testing all the objects in his house to make sure they're not made of cake. Well, I think I'm going to go play a prank on Chris. So while I sneak down there like the Grinch and steal his computer, let's get into this week's Florida Man or Jersey Man. And for our first story, a woman cuts off her husband's penis and runs from the police. 
And for our second story, a man is arrested for lurking around a neighborhood with his underwear around his neck. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, so we, <laughs> I, what was the first story? Something about a man with his penis cut off. Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the eunuch or the um, uh, uh, underwear around the neck. Uh, Sarah, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> I'm so stuck on that joke. Um, the underwear around the neck is Florida. Okay, Nick. Mm, that's a tough one. We don't have any clues in this one. Um, underwear around mm. neck seems very sketchy for Jersey. That's probably Chris. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little thrown off because the underwear on the neck or the the eunuch, like you know, accidentally chopped his you know thing off, could both be Ohio. So I have no idea <laughs> <laughs> why how this could be. So I just say underwear on the neck, Florida. Yeah, I'm gonna say underwear around the neck, Florida, because we know how Jerseyans feel of about knives and cutting things. So uh, the probably, accidents happen. Accidents happen. All right, let's find out the answers. So our first story is from New Jersey, where a 44-year-old woman, enraged to find out her husband is having an affair, chopped off her husband's penis with a dull kitchen knife. Oh. The woman was charged with aggravated assault oh. after she used the knife to attack her husband, a 42-year-old deli man. Wait a minute. He works in a deli and he had his meat cut off? <laughs> That's ironic. <laughs> Anyways, I haven't seen a man lose his masculinity that fast since Scott donned his spirit jersey and said, I think I'll become a TikToker. <laughs> So that means our second story is from Florida, where a 35-year-old man was arrested after he was caught lurking in a neighborhood with underwear around his neck in the same area where bonsai trees were reportedly stolen two weeks earlier. Speaking of underwear, Nick, stop trying to talk me into wearing gay underwear. I did try that underwear with the ball pocket. It wasn't for me, but ball pocket's what Nick's been calling his mouth. And in other news, the school where Footloose was filmed is scheduled to be demolished. <laughs> Students still attending this school petitioned to have Kevin Bacon come to their prom. Kevin responded with a Zoom call where he said, I'm going to come. I got to come. Which is the exact same thing Scott says every time high schoolers are brought up in conversation. Oh my God. <laughs> so before I go, I would like to plug one thing that I've been doing. Maddie and I have been doing a travel podcast called Destination Diz. There was... There was somebody else there. Who was that? I hate it here. Man, it seems like such a jerk thing for me to forget about who the other host was. Who was that? Yeah, it'll come to me later. So be on the lookout for Destination Diz being posted with the Diz His podcast. Nick, it was Nick. Nick was there. It's Diz His Destinations with Sam Piper Vacations. See, Nick, I didn't forget. Anyways, that's it for me this week, guys. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you so much, Ryan. Appreciate that. It, it did come oh, to you later, Ryan. Something that he said that I wanted. I come to you later. Oh, Ryan, I'm not talking to you anymore. You know, I have several pairs of underwear with the ball pocket. Really? The, yeah. Because we are... were just talking about this in a conversation today. Maddie actually talked about it because we were talking about balls slapping the legs. And one thing led to another and Ryan bought two pairs. Yeah, I, I I have I have several pairs and they're my, my wife gets them for me and like they're inappropriate little things like um, w there's a bunch of gingerbread in different positions, like sexual positions. Ew, and then what? she got me what little gingerbread in sexual positions. Yeah. And then constellations in sexual positions. What? <laughs> and then all the emojis like this the innuendo. You're emojis, like 47. Like <laughs> Why are you? <laughs> I know. I, are you I'm trying to picture this, and I'm like, "How big?" I'll send you pictures the next time I have them on. How, I would uh, gladly, just for science. Uh, <laughs> how big's your underwear? Like, this sounds like there's a lot going on on there. Circus tent. Um, I mean, they're 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 like repeated. Is this why you don't go to Costco? They're like repeated. What's Is that? this why you don't go to Costco? It, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You need to go shopping at our stores. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, we, do we have any more friendies? Yeah, I actually have one last one. Uh, uh, no, two last ones. So uh, before we go on to the um, last, uh, we, we have best bit, best bit. Nominees for best bit are Brain Explosion, Apology Sandwich, Castellanos, Alex, cut that, and Mr. Scott. Winning by one vote. Is Alex cut that? I mm. love that one. The best one. 
it's, yeah, it's it, a good will, one. it will live for it will live forever it will live forever um Alex, you could be a Jewish doctor or the editor of the po- this podcast. <laughs> Maybe he can edit a speech in here. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And if he Alex, doesn't, you're going to have yeah. to put in another speech. Yeah, you're going to have to put in one more speech. Wow. I won an award. I can't believe it. Um, yeah, I love this bit because, you know, I love listening to audio uh, two or three times to make sure I indeed need to cut that or not. It's even so funny we bring over on Diz His. But uh, yeah, thank you for everyone who voted for me. Um, next year, vote for me for everything else, even if I'm not included in the actual poll. And I do have one last uh, award. Uh, I think this was probably the uh, most significant one of the night, I would think. You'll see why it's the most important. But I, I just think that this award uh, will go to last award of the night. Aww. Oh my God! Harriet Tubman. All right, guys. So the Harriet Tubman Award, I believe, if I if I'm gathering this correctly, the Harriet Tubman Award goes to the No New Friends podcast number one fan of color. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> For those listening at home, the nominees are Lewis, mm. Louise. Lewis or Luis. Uh-oh. And the friend he goes to. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is a winner. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, gosh. <laughs> wow. What an upset. <laughs> Dane from Big Beautiful Diz wins the Harriet Tubman No New Friends podcast number one fan of color award for 2024. Dane. Congratulations. I'm pretty sure Dane's of Amish descent. I think that counts. I'm pretty sure that wow. counts. Dane, congratulations. Uh, you deserve this, buddy. Like I said, probably the most important award of the night. Uh, really happy. It's like La La Land was like supposed to win, or. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I'm very upset right now. No offense to Dane. Dude, I don't. I, I just. Like I just present them. I just present them. Gonna, I don't. I'm, I don't choose. I'm them. gonna follow a Kanye and say that it should have been Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> I just listen. I listen. I just present them. Dane, congratulations <laughs> for winning the Harriet Tubman. <laughs> that wraps that ra- that wraps up uh that wraps up uh, scott wrapping something up means like when you're finished with something or uh it, yes wraps. this will pass on his non-acceptance <laughs> um guys actually um you forgot an award um move 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 i'm gay <laughs> nick's on the mic and it's time to take notice and if you don't like it that's homophobic stay the hell out of his way move, move on he's gay, gay. Okay, like Wait. we need to, alex please leave that in because the karaoke tonight is like <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna this is what's gonna take us over the, over the edge um speaking of over the edge and over the top but did i i don't know um i have a travel update it oh, doesn't have okay. to do with travel per se, like actual vacation or anything, but I did win an award this week. And um, you did. Yeah. I, I I don't remember if I actually messaged you guys or not because I was, it's been a very long week. Um, this award actually went to my spam email and I didn't realize that I got it <laughs> until <laughs> a week later. So I work with a bunch of different suppliers with same Harper Vacations. Um, like Disney and Royal Caribbean Virgin Voyages. Um, one, I, one of my suppliers is ALG Vacations. So they own a few different brands in their portfolios. Um, Funjet Vacations, United Vacations, Southwest Vacations. Um, it's basically who we use for our all-inclusive resorts. Um, if you want to go to Hawaii or Europe or anything like that. Um, but I got an award from them and <laughs> I was actually surprised about it. So my manager from um, ALG Vacations, she nominated me to be um, I was in the nomination with over 400 travel agents um, to be one mm. of the top 40 agents under the age of 40. So I, I'm going to actually get emotional um, talking about it now, but um, I won an award and I'm basically one of the top travel agents in the United States under the age of 40. So it's pretty, Mate, that that's is amazing. amazing. Like it's a pretty amazing to wow. hear that and to see how far I've come over the past three years with, um, this agency and I'm really crying now. Sorry. I'm 
it's been a rough week. Um, but yeah, so I I got nominated by my manager. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to make it to the awards ceremony thing, which is in Punta Cana, which um, I won a free trip to Punta Cana. I can't unfortunately go because I'm going to be on vacation with my family. But um, so I, I'll accept it here, I guess. So Remy will fill in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so it, it was really cool um, to be nominated and accepted for something like that. Um, what sucks is I guess I can't be nominated next year because I'm going to turn 40 this year. So um, maybe I'll be <laughs> top agent under the age of 50, um, which I don't like that. So um, yeah, that's my Nick, I, I, I just want to say so when, when you start a business, when you own your own business, one of the hardest things just mentally is like no one's ever coming up to you and telling you, hey, you're doing a great mm. job. There's you don't have a higher up that's, that that pats you on the back and that just that just saying hey you know you you got a promotion or this or that so the fact that you were able to get that kind of recognition for all this hard work you've been doing I'm I'm so yeah. happy for you and it's just what what an amazing achievement seriously and not to yeah. get all sappy on 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 uh, this podcast where we where I'm not serious at all <laughs> but I'm I'm seriously seriously like genuinely happy for you that is that is an amazing achievement that uh that no one could ever take away from you and yeah. remember forever that is so cool Nick. yeah it's like when I got it I literally saw it a week later in my email um that was a true story <laughs> I I looked at Sean and I was like um I just won like a pretty amazing award and it's like I said I I don't get those pats on the back like I used to at my old job and even though those pats on no. the back were very one hat and say good job that's it move on like for me this is a huge deal because my goal originally was to be recognized as like a top 10 travel agent in columbus ohio um but the fact that i'm one of the top 40 under 40 in the united states i feel yeah it's an incredible blown away that's amazing so that's good a, for you, it, it's awesome nick Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, no, that's super awesome. Yeah, congrats. Congratulations. Um, uh, Scott wants to know he's going live in 10 minutes. I was, damn it. I was just about to say Nick. I'm about to go live. <laughs> Wait for it. I, uh, did, did I even, uh, did I even text you guys that? I don't even remember because it's been, in, it's a little been a long week. I, might I, have, I think you I, did. Like, I think you did. You, you did. Yeah, because I knew you couldn't go. go on your trip. On the go. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. I mean, that's right. So I, I think we in. talked about it last week on After Dark or after the show or something. At some, some point, I, but I know it's we been a very long, rough, yeah. emotional week in general. And so yeah, Thank, thanks for thanks for going live. No, I'm super I'm super excited <laughs> for you. Then you are. You are. We got nine months of it. <laughs> Alex, I think I joked about death too much this episode. You ever just feel like a cleanse from no new friends? Oh, yeah, always. I every Wednesday after I get done editing the podcast, I need a cleanse. Yeah, just like a little bit of family friendly content, right? Something wholesome. You have a recommendation? Our other podcast, Dis His, the Disney History Podcast, I think would be a great alternative. Do I have to like Disney? Uh, I mean, it helps. All right. Well, because I love Disney. Well, that's really good. That's a good start. Where can I listen to this podcast that I record with you? Well, our podcast comes out every Tuesday, but if you want, you can also go to our YouTube channel, Diz His Pod, and we have all of our past episodes up on there. We also on all social media under Diz His Pod. We do post every week, and uh, we also have our own Patreon, just like uh, Nimmy Friends. Really? I'm going to have to go check this podcast out that we do together. Yes. I would love if you listen to our podcast once in a while. Alex, what's coming up on Diz His? Well, this week on Diz His, we have myself, Chris, Ryan and RJ on to talk about Bambi, one of the first, I think the sixth film to come out for Disney, if I remember correctly. We just did the episode on but I already forgot everything I learned while doing the history. But it's a really interesting history. It was a fun episode. And uh, if you haven't seen Bambi in a long time, definitely worth a watch. Thank you, Alex. It's weird, weird messaging there. Yeah, um, kind of like encrypted again. Chris. Our Facebook was like taken over. It's really weird. Speaking of. Eddie D's in. I know. I know. There's yeah. some yeah. strange <laughs> things happening. You Eddie strange Deezen. things yeah. happening Steve over the passwords. Yeah. Chris, do you have any cliff notes? I do. It's been quite the show. A lot of stuff's happened, so nothing can stop this little boy from recapping the day. The Chris is Cliff's Notes way. So to start the show today, we talked about Eddie Deason and Steve's relationship. Uh, what a toxic relationship. Now all of our listeners know what it's like to have a relationship with Scott. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh. Oh. Uh, so since I was so focused on the friendies tonight, I told Scott live on the show I would not be doing Cliff Notes tonight. He then swiftly texted me and told me, and I quote, I'll fucking make you marry by the end of the night if you do not do Cliff Notes. <gasps> wow. <Unquote. laughs> I'm oh. surprised about that. Yeah. Ruby's word of the week this week was so confusing. I felt like I lost a couple hundred brain cells. <laughs> Now you know what it's like to watch Scott's monorail pub crawl on TikTok Live. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Still trying to recover from that. I feel like I had more of a hangover than Scott did from watching that. <laughs> on Scott's Live, he said that he thought he tore his Achilles while pivoting on the monorail. Try playing 12-year-olds on a pickup game of basketball, Scott, and then talk to me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> In Jersey Man versus Florida Man, Ryan said that he was afraid that if I fell off the roof, another earthquake would occur. Joke's on you, Ryan. If I fell off the roof, the witness would then become the Santa Claus. <laughs> 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 I'm glad you guys understood that. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan said that he forgot the third host of the podcast that he was on. And that it would come to him later. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and lastly this is horrible in Abby's middle school word of the week you could hear a dog being shot and killed three of us looked mortified and there was Scott who realized he just got a free sex doll oh my god oh. 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 and those are my cliff notes wow. thank you so much Chris, wow. Okay, Jeez. so when does this episode come out? This kid, not this Sunday. Like three months from now. <laughs> next Sunday. I don't know what day it is anymore. So we've recorded first, a lot of episodes. Second, third, <laughs> fourth, fifth. Okay, so if you're hearing this episode now and it's Sunday the 5th, you have one day to vote or to nominate us for uh, Orlando Weekly's Best of Orlando Competition. Uh, best local podcast under the category local notables, also uh, best local TikTok, and then the uh, the nominees will be announced soon. Um, if you'd like to watch us do this every single Wednesday, it's a whole production. It's very visual now. Uh, YouTube.com every Wednesday about eight p.m. ish. Uh, but join our Discord for free because that's when all the announcements come up of when we're recording, when we're live, where we're live. Are we on the TikTok? Are we on the YouTube? Where are we? So they just go to literally just youtube.com and we're just right there. Yes. <laughs> <very good. laughs> it's youtube.com slash at no new friends podcast. There you go. There you go. Uh, but join our free discord so you can meet everybody. And then um, I'm throwing off my games because I never did an intro. My name's Scott. I'm the host. And with me as always, uh, my amazing co-host, the scumbag reselling order himself, Chris. Uh, I, I, I thought maybe if I was hosting, I did the outro, but you started the outro. So I'll finish the outro here. Thank you guys for attending the 2024 second annual, second annual, second annual Friendy Awards. Until next year, I will not be hosting. So on behalf of Scott, our emotional support came Nick, Sarah, Ryan, Darren, Abby, Remy. I'm Chris. We'll see you next time. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> no new friends, just the old.